Welcome to Author Nation. I'm Melody Owen, and this is your place. If you want to be a successful nonfiction author, we have information for you from planning to publishing and everything in between. And today I'm super excited because I'm doing an interview with Becky Norwood. She's a number one international best selling author, speaker, and book publishing expert. She is the CEO of Spotlight Publishing, and she's widely recognized for empowering and intuitive for the empowering intuitive way she guides others to weave storytelling into their books and marketing. She incorporates her methods with sound marketing that is the pathway for business expansion and audience growth. She has brought over 150 authors to number one bestseller, through her author studio TV show, countless listeners have heard her interviews of both authors and experts offering sage advice. She offers an extensive catalog of services supporting emerging and established authors. Becky believes that a well-told story is a gateway for growth, sharing, and a way to unite humanity. She is an advocate for the positive that comes from sharing our creative genius and impacting our world in positive ways. I think that is awesome, amazing. Welcome, Becky. Please tell us a little bit more about you. Wow, that sounded really good. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, you know, I I have um, a blended family of uh, five adult kids and ten grandkids. Wow. And yeah, it's pretty fun. I love my grandkids. Oh my gosh, they're fun. Um, you know, just love the camp, love to, to especially I do a lot of crafting um, in my spare time. And I don't read as much as I used to because I spend so much time with books every day. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and helping the authors to bring those books to the world. So um, you used to be very avid reader on my off hours. Now it's like I need my eyes to rest. <laughs> yeah, my mind to rest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You do a lot of reading for work, right? So I do. after work, right. it's like, maybe I'll do something else. So yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, we are here to talk about the four pillars of a story we're told. And I'm super excited about this because I love storytelling. So would you l just let us in on what are these four pillars? Well, you know, there's, it builds on the, the idea that something that we've all known for a very long time, and that is that that storytelling is what what is the bonding part of humanity. It's what keeps, it, it's been passed from generations to the beginning of time. Storytelling has been there for us. And yet there's times that in modern years, even the, you know before COVID hit, when we were all going out to dinner and doing things like that, you could see entire families out to eat together but they're all on their devices and nobody's talking to each other. And it, uh, I think about the, the true wisdom that is passed on from generation to generation. And what I, and it feels like that might be missing in, in a lot of people's lives just because of the devices that we have. Modern world, it is what it is. And yet when, as we mature as, as individuals, we seem to really get that it's time to be telling our stories. I was, there's a series on uh, Netflix. Or no, it's on PBS. It's on PBS and it's called Finding Your Roots. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman, Henry Gates Jr., he does an amazing job um, helping people dig into what their roots, their history is. And it's very amazing. Many, many he does a lot of politicians, a lot of movie stars, and it's, Amazing how many people don't know past their parents' generation and they don't even know their grandparents past. And they take it back in time through all of the DNA testing and everything. And there's such a rich history and yet we're not passing those histories on. We're not teaching the lessons. And so when somebody comes to me and say, you know, they typically, even if it's a nonfiction book, I say, um, there has to be some storytelling in here because it can't be all facts and figures because you will not hold your reader's attention if it's all facts and figures. You've got to weave the storytelling into it. And it doesn't matter what kind of book it is, it needs to have the story. And so the, as I've worked with them, I've realized that storytelling um, amplifies the magnetism to those who are our tribe. 
And there's the four pillars that I've come up with is we become advocates, we become truth tellers, we unite people for whatever the cause is, and we also um, we're the truth tellers. So we're the truth tellers, unified way showers, way showers. And so each one of those play a specific role in, and if we think about what we're writing and the message that we want to, to, to provide, whether it's a biography or a nonfiction, whatever we're doing, but we need to show, be an advocate for those that have no voice. And I can give an example of that. Um, my, my, first book that I published was before I ever realized I was going to be a publisher. <laughs> and that was, that was, um, it, at the time, that's all I wanted to do. I didn't really ever consider that. But what came from that is that many came back and asked me to help them publish their books. And it's just grown into a magnificent business. But my story was called The Woman I Love. And my past as a, as a child was incredible abuse from my father. And when, as I got older, the, I told the story because as I went into adulthood, I had to learn a new way. I had to, to learn the, the way, I didn't stop attracting the things that I was used to um, from my childhood, but attracting those things into my life and fight and really reach and heal and and do all the things that are so important to do when you've had a trauma in the past and there's not one of us that doesn't have some sort of trauma that comes our way not one of us you just can't live on this earth but i have something that can go like that get you you know and it's what we do with it that that makes all the difference so in in retrospect when you look at that that story when I just the writing of the story was healing and then when I published it and it became a number one international bestseller that was incredible it was a wonderful amazing feeling but afterwards there were so many that reached out and said thank you people I didn't know that reached out and said thank you for telling your story having the courage to, sh to tell your story and even men that read the book said, man, now I understand my mom. Now I understand my wife. Mm. You know, so it, it was, there, there was a lot of healing that took place for me in that. But in retrospect, when you look at it, you become an advocate for those that, that maybe they're struggling with the very same thing that you're, you have struggled with. Mm. And by you shining the light for them and showing them the way, and united him. I I had a nice, very large set, um, Facebook group that that sprung from that. And then after that, two books that were called "We Choose to Thrive," and these were women that had gone through very similar things, who decided to share their story, many for the first time. Mm -hmm. And so it was quite an interesting journey. From that, I've started. You know, I haven't stayed with those kinds of stories as much because I needed. Needed a breath of fresh air for to, from hearing those kind of stories over and over again, and so it, it expanded into quite a wide variety of types of books that that are published. I have some children's books, and I have a few doctors that I've published for a couple of com coming up, um, and then there's you can see the books in the background. There's the heroes in your midst, uh, that's from Helping Hands for Single Moms and a local organization and they use that book as a fundraiser but they showcase the stories of single moms that that had gone through their program and how they succeeded and actually a lot of those single moms are actually working for the organization now it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing to see what what has happened mm -hmm. so the wide variety yeah it it sounds like to me that with advocacy when we're talking about advocacy as an author one of the first uh, ways you're an advocate is for self right? That first writing of the story, you become your own advocate, going looking back at your story in a, in a new way, kind of re, revisiting it and retelling it, making you the hero of the story and, and therefore becoming a self-advocate. And when you've gone through that process and you've healed, you can then think about publishing that book as a, in a sense of advocacy for other people who have similar stories to yours and who could benefit from maybe knowing they're not alone 
or looking at how you dealt with your story so that they can come up with some, you know, they have new skills for themselves or um, kind of learning something about about themselves through your story and that's what it sounds like when you say advocacy um that's that's exactly that's exactly it yes yeah okay because you really do become an advocate for yourself because for me it put things in such a perspective Mm -hmm. and before i didn't have a voice and all of a sudden i discovered i do have a voice and it needed to be heard and by letting it out to the world kind of like i always say just releasing it out like that by by publishing it was like it took the fire and the steam away from it and yet it also set me free exactly and then once you're an advocate for yourself you become you can help others find their voice as well thereby coming an advocate for other people right very much Excellent. And then you talked about uh, authors as unifiers, and you mentioned just a little while ago about a Facebook group that, you know, you, when you published your first book, you then had a Facebook group uh, with women who had had similar experiences to you. Is that an example of unifying? It is. And that group, what was interesting about that is I would post, you know, uplifting things every day, and every once in a while we'd start among us and the group got quite large we all started just being there in support because there's times that that um people that especially have gone through really any situation but in this case it was a really abusive situations there's times that they can be doing really really well and something triggers Mm -hmm. and so we were there always to to kind of just boost each other you know um we found you know, there were a few that just like to, to, they were always unhappy, but for the majority, the, the extra strength that they, uh, they were able to um, tap into from others that had knew what it felt like, it was very healthy group. It, it really, it really did well for a long time. I actually um, have somebody else running that group now because I, I've just been busy enough that that I don't, I'm not in that environment as much, but um, there's a couple of other people that have told their stories and they've gone on to coaching in that realm and different things. So it's been a real <laughs> uniting factor. Yeah, that sounds like unifying means to uh, bring people together for shared experiences and not just not just those who have had the exact same experience, but people who love people who have had those experiences, like the the men who now understand their mothers and and their wives, to bring those people together, to unify them in a community, to validate their experiences, to give them a place to speak about their experiences, to give them a place, a safe place to learn about moving forward. Is that what you mean by unifying? Yes, and and the thing is, is that. In unifying, um, as we as we bring together, as we become a re- kind of almost a resource for for strength, and that that grows and expands. I always think about um, there's a lot of think a lot of schools of thought about how human beings are vibrate carry vibrational frequencies, mm-hmm. and on the lower end of the scale is is fear, shame, guilt, mm-hmm. and as you you get over those those um like i held deep shame and terror you know just when you go through that you think it's all you and you, you so and then there's the shame of all the things that happen and you don't want anybody to know and so as you get through those things and it it comes up to the courage to stand it comes up to the to acceptance of what happened it comes up to loving yourself and what that does is it becomes a ripple effect Um, if vibrations go out and it affects more even if somebody it just changes the environment it's just pretty amazing amazing what can happen with that but when you're in the midst of writing a book like that is especially when you think okay i just i i'm not going to finish this it is just too hard to do ask yourself what kind of an impact can I make for others? What kind of a difference can I make in this world? And I think today, you know, we we have so much at our, we're talking and you're way across the, you know, we're many miles apart, 
and yet we're able to connect this way and we're able to get our message out in very amazing ways where years ago we would have never had it. It's not so isolated. It's it's rich and it's whole in the being able to connect and even form friendships in this way. But but ask yourself, how can I serve? How can I serve in this world and make a difference? Yeah. And by being a unifier, you're serving in a way that helps just maybe just fill that that without even touching just the warmth of the connection. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. And, and so when you're working with authors and you're talking about unifying, do you work with them to create that unifying effect within the book and outside of the book as well? Yes, yes. It's really important that, that we... Um, Remember, I, I always tell my, my authors, first the first conversations are, what is your why in your writing? And then, who is this book for? Mm -hmm. Aside from yourself and the healing that it brings to you, who is this book for? And then tap in, find out where those people are. And there's, there's with social media, we can find out, find pretty easily how to do that. But start, start talking, start a conversation. And for me, Facebook was perfect for that kind of book conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, people were looking for those kind of resources and they still do. And there's a lot of groups out there, but when you start sharing in the journey, you would be amazed at the support that you get, but you need it. It, it requires some deep thought into what kind of people do you want to attract and how do you want to serve? Yeah. Who's your tribe? Yeah, and as you talk about unifying, I find that what goes through my mind is this book unifies people, you know, through groups. But I think there's also a unifying effect for you, the author, and the individual reader, almost like a back to wholeness. Unify. Right. Well, we think about people like um, Brene Brown in one of her quotes is just amazing. And I, I think I have it here. I want to read it to Kenneth Samantha. It says, the irony is that we attempt to disown our difficult stories to appear more whole or more acceptable. But our wholeness, even our wholeheartedness, depends on the integration of all of our experiences, including our faults. Yes. Yeah, that's and I think that quote is just magnificent. And, you know, one of the opening statements I usually do when I'm speaking to groups is um, story can bring to light untapped wisdom. Mm. It can heal lives. It can transform hearts. It's a gateway for growth. It's the path for sharing. It's what brings us closer together. And it's through those threads of those stories that we weave together a, a, a more improved world, a better world. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I want I want to talk about uh, truth telling. I, to be honest, I feel that everything we've said up to this point is an example of truth telling. Um, but can you expand a little bit more on truth telling and the advice you give authors around truth telling? Well, the the um, truth telling the truth about a situation helps us to become even better than we were before. I think. And when we stand in our truth and we shed the light on situations, then we're in effect becoming not, we're, we're holding the light and holding this, this space, but in the very telling of the truth of a situation, it, it brings clarity to others. And maybe somebody's in a situation, I have a um, client that, that published a book last week, it's called Outwitting the Manipulator. Mm. And to me, there was a lot of truth in that book. And and they they talked about it. We did live interviews. We did a TV show for it. We did a lot of things for exposure for, for this particular book launch, which I do for all book launches, but it was pretty cool. But the there is a um, couple that wrote the book and they're in speech com and communication. But this book was on her heart, especially because she had been through a terrible marriage mm -hmm. and um, had, there was a lot of manipulation going on. And she said, but, but truth be told, I learned to be a manipulator too. Yeah. You know? And so 
when she was able to speak that truth, it helps change the perspective as not always the bad guy, you know, and that there's some external situations. And sometimes when we're put in position, we our reaction is to manipulate right back, you know, and in the, in the context of what they were talking about, they were really sharing some very important truths in that but also giving a whole entirely new perspective on how to rise above that. Mm-hmm. And, and not only react if you're being manipulated, but to catch yourself if you're doing the manipulating. Yeah, yeah, good point. And, and can we, talk, talking about truth-telling, if we can go back a little bit, you were talking about your story. And as a victim, we often feel a lot of shame. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, we think, you know, we think our truth is ugly and and as perpetrators too right there's this whole you know if 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 i've been the perpetrator right where where would i find mercy right who would who would read my book and you know if i'm ready to kind of come clean can you talk about truth like ugly truth there is a lot of ugly truth in the world and yet it's the recognition of it And if we tell the truth, it eliminates their barricades and barriers to relationships. It's, um, we really, as a leader in our world, and I think all of us are, need to be, you know, answer to the call to lead in some sort of way. And we do maybe in our own little, in our own families or maybe in our community. But, but when we, celebrate the truth by speaking the truth it, it transforms so much and it really kind of um, gives the opportunity to to face life and see life in a different perspective yeah yeah whether you know. that truth is beautiful or ugly right yeah yeah, yeah. Well said. yeah. and there's that saying the truth shall set you free yes. you know um, and I you know in this whole conversation I I think that there's the scriptural teachings that say, don't hide your light under a bushel basket. Yeah. You know, and the light of truth, when it shines, no matter whether it's on, the, it's the good, bad, or the ugly, it, it is. But at the same time, it gives us all an opportunity to even better ourselves if that's what our hearts is willing to do. And I think for most of us, I think there's mostly good in this world. There's There's all kinds of things, but there's still a lot of good yeah. yeah and and i think that when you believe your story is shameful when you feel you've done something wrong or you know you've done something wrong and you feel your story is shameful i think holding on to that and pushing it down that doesn't give us that opportunity to grow and learn and become better humans it, it holds us still in in that in that shame and it holds us it keeps the negative with us. And when we finally let go and say, look, I've done these horrible things and I don't want to be this person anymore. And here's my story. I think that lifts the weight of, of the, you know, the, the bad choices we've made and the shame we feel around it and opens up a route to a, a, a better way of living. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we've, we've yeah. talked, we've talked about truth telling, and we've talked about, you know, um, telling our own truths, putting our truth out there, self-advocacy and that turning into advocating for others and unifying. And the last one was way showing. So I've told my truth. I'm an advocate. I've unified. How as an author can I be a way shower? I think the, the way shower comes in as, as a way that uh, that we we talk about the things that we've done to 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 heal from a situation and, and how we've risen about it but i in the number of people I, I i work with as authors what's fascinating to me is usually their darkest hour turns into their the place where they shine once they've come to accept it and they've gotten rid of the shame guilt and fear once that that has taken place it's pretty amazing because they can, there's wisdom that can be had. I mean, many people that have gone through any kind of like maybe abuse or maybe somebody's had cancer or anything like that, once they get through it and can tell the story, 
their sharing of the story shows the way for another one. Maybe puts total, you know, just sheds the light to show this is how what I did, and maybe it's not the perfect solution, but it maybe give a fresh perspective. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of being in the mountains, <clears throat> hiking, and night falls and it's dark and you can't see anything, and then you turn your headlamp on and there's this path opens up in front of you and that feeling of oh, I can find my way back. I can find my way to where I need to go. Yeah. 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 But now when we were talking about this interview, you suggested a fifth pillar. Um, do, would you would you be willing to share this fifth pillar with us? I'd be delighted to. And that is you become a legacy maker. Mm. You're leaving a legacy. And whether it's passed on to our own families, whether they see it or not, a lot of times in a family, that's not what happens, you know, depends on the family. But for others, you leave a legacy too. And you leave that, that footprint, that, on, that footprint that is eternally yours of somebody who stood for something that was really important for others to hear. Yeah. You know? You know, and what better thing to know that you, you you left something that somebody else could benefit from? Yeah, well, we hear a lot about um, legacy in, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons people say, I want to write, leave a legacy, I want to leave a legacy. Is the legacy for the author or is the legacy for the world once the author is gone? I think it's both. Yeah. I think it's a combination, you know. Um, if you know you've made a difference and, you, and you're in your final days of life, what does that make you feel like? Yeah. You're, it, it, there's a richness about it. There's a beauty about it. Um, at the same time, so it, 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 it does something to, not to brag on ourselves, but at the same time, it, there's just a sweet satisfaction that we've, we've done what we could. Yeah. And then it's a legacy that others benefit from. Because they can continue. Um, think of the authors that have long gone, but we read their books and we gain so much every single day from the legacy that they left for for humanity, for for many many others, not just a few. Yeah, yeah. No, I I absolutely agree. I know in my own healing journey, there were certain types of memoirs that I read um, that that gave me that hope. It's like, wow, if they can go through that and move forward and live full lives, then yeah, maybe I can too. And so, and, and these are authors that had passed or I'd never met, you know, people I don't know, but they shared more with me than, than my family ever did. So I, I absolutely hear you in that. That's, that's amazing. Um, can, now, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about you and what you do for authors? Can you give us some of the, like what types of books do you work with? What types of authors do you work with? What are the main services you offer? My focus with authors, I work with kind of a wide cross section of authors, but the majority of them are nonfiction type of books. Um, and we start our first conversation is to the why, mm -hmm. and then, then is to who, who is the person you're writing this book for? And then really deep conversation centered around, are you willing to do what it takes? Because writing a book is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And then you get it all written and it needs to be edited. And sometimes giving up that work of heart and letting somebody else pick it apart to make it better it's really hard to take, <laughs> you know, so there's that. And also we talk about the marketing and I always say the minute you put pen to paper mm -hmm. is the time you start your marketing. Yeah. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Well, where, where are the people that you want to, that you're writing this book for? Are they on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. Are they on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Are they Instagram? Who? reach start talking about your process of, you know the struggles of maybe actually getting this book written and and things that you found that work and things that don't work for you and every one of us are different that way and then start talking about you know maybe showcase this is my idea for a book cover for this book and what you know i'm really struggling with what the title of the book should be you would be amazed that people will get drawn in and be so helpful 
and give you one little special nugget of, oh my God, I never thought of that, you know? And the, I teach how to do a lot of research. Um, mm-hmm. I, I use Google and actually Amazon a lot to see what other people that are writing on the same subject are doing. And I go and look at the, the reviews. Mm-hmm. And I pay close attention to the reviews that are not five star. Mm-hmm. They're they're lower stars, and why are they what why are they not as high of stars? And usually, they'll say something like, "Well, this was a really good book, but mm-hmm. I think they left they left some important information out, or I was needing help in this way, and they just didn't. This is what I was looking for an answer for." Those, those reviews can give a tremendous amount of attention of, of things. And you can find maybe things that are missing that you could add yeah. to that. Yeah. But you're able to, and then see who's following them. Watch, you know, watch how that, what's happening. Search out the social, social media. You'll be amazed. But as you form, I always, um, one of the things that I encourage them to do is start a Facebook page and a Facebook group, same name. Mm-hmm. And so your general people that are seeming, you know, a little bit interested and they're just kind of curious and it sounds like a good thing, they're in the Facebook page. If you want to go deeper and offer support at some point or get deeper conversations, that's for the Facebook group. Yeah. yeah. And in same way with, with other platforms, there, I teach them how to go to forums and see what the conversations are. There's a lot of ways to glean extra little nuggets of truth, extra little nuggets of everything. But I honestly feel that, you know, I offer, you know, I teach them how to build their launch team, how to get endorsements for the book, um, how to build the framework of social media and set up an email, you know, start building an email list, you know, do all these things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really, pretty cool because by the time they get to launch there's so many things that are in place and it serves them because I teach teach them that they need all my authors you got to treat this book like it's a business whether it's a children's book a fiction book a memoir Mm -hmm. or a non-fiction I'm teaching something vital to to show the show the light Mm -hmm. doesn't matter it's there's a lot of work that goes into a book and if you don't market it, and if you don't use all the tools and resources available, that book doesn't, where's, how's it going to get found? Because there's a lot of books being published on all kinds of subjects. And even in your subject, there's a lot of books being published. So use it as a way to get your message out. So you have to, I always, I when I first started publishing, I would watch some of my authors and they'd come back, well, my book's not selling at all but they didn't hire me to do the after marketing, mm-hmm. you know? And so I'm like, well, what are you, are you even speaking on, about the book? Are you, mm-hmm. are you continuing the conversation? Are you, you know, cultivating the interests? Um, and that's what's important. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it sounds like you will go right from, you know, I've got a book idea and well, you'll help them plan the book. You'll, coach them through writing it you'll coach them through the publishing i'm assuming you don't you know make the book cover for them or format it or like that those are not i have teams you know i i i used to do all of that and now i'm busy enough that it just doesn't doesn't work for me to do all those pieces so um i work with people that have their own businesses that they're that's what they do they're a book formatter i work with editors that's their business and so the editing is outside of the package uh, my my packages i like them to bring me edited copy even if they've just started and they, they i mean they haven't they're just getting started reading we'll do some vip sessions where we really kind of nail down okay what's how are we going to lay out the chapters? What are those chapter names? Okay. Um, you know, how are we? What do you have in mind for a cover? Um, do you want it and do, you know, somebody to illustrate it for you? Do you want a stock photo? You know, something like that. What's the title going to be? What's the subtitle? And then they've got to. I can't write it for them. Now there's ghostwriters, and I have people that can refer for ghostwriting. But then it's not really your true essence. You know, um, for some that works. For for most of us, to tell a story like that, it still needs to be us. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. Um, and then I do have um, resources where I, I send it for formatting now. I have a beautiful book cover designer. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's just a lot. I do a tremendous lot of research when it comes time for publishing to make sure we get uh, some of my secret sauce to, for getting the categories and the keywords right and all of those to help it get, but get found in as many places as possible. Yeah. So it sounds like you will lead an author through the entire process and the pieces you don't do, you're connected to other people. So if they right. come to you, that you're not doing all of it, but you kind of connect them out to other people and you lead them through from zero right through to to published and marketing. That's amazing. Right. So where can authors find you? So my, my website is the spotlightpublishing.pro. Mm-hmm. And it, on there, if they decide you want to have a... Um, discovery session I offer free discovery sessions they're half an hour where you sit really there's some questions when you sign up for it to um on my calendar and so it's the it's on my website as well um my email is becky at spotlightpublishing.pro I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram and I'm on LinkedIn and I'm all over the place and and if you go to my Facebook page I think it's spotlight publishing um I've changed the name a few times just trying to be really clear who I am and what I do. Yeah. Um, there you'll see I have a TV show. Um, I, I interview authors on the TV show. I interview experts that support authors right. um, from everything from digital business cards to mobile apps to giving your book wings through getting hosted on radio shows and and um, oh man, the experts that I talk to are just amazing and so are my authors. I mean, I try to provide as many resources for learning as I can to help my authors find ways that they can get their message out. You know, Um, because it's it's way more than just writing a book and getting it published. You know, you want it to, you want it to get found. You want it to get read. You want it to reach hearts. Exactly. But we will put all of that in the description. We'll put in Becky's website. We'll put in, uh, Becky has a an ebook about the pillars. We'll make sure that's in there. We'll put her Facebook group. Everything will be in the description. So if you're looking for Becky, you will find her there. Becky, have we missed anything at all today? Oh, I'm sure we have. <laughs> <laughs> a, one of the things I feel like, um, really serves authors well is to realize and that's when especially when it comes to reaching the hearts that you want and and surrounding yourself with people that will that will support you and help you and promote you is that no one can whistle a symphony it takes an orchestra to play it yes and you know it's it takes we're in this world together. Let's support each other in the best ways possible. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Becky, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for uh, you know, giving us the, the pillars for a well-told story. I really enjoyed our conversation. And uh, for anyone out there who wants to get a hold of Becky, everything's in the description. You can, you can reach her there. Again, thank you so much. Thank you. And you're such a good interviewer. I appreciate oh. it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And out there, Author Nation, if you enjoyed this, give the video a thumbs up. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. Beck here and I will come and answer them. And of course, if you're enjoying this, subscribe for more. Thanks. Thank you.